Hello and welcome to Foresight BI Power BI Clinic. My name is Ahmed Oyelo, and in this video, we are going to be looking at how to use Power Query to prepare data. So basically, we are going to be looking at the technique in Power Query that you can use to split the content of a cell or probably cells into rows. Okay, so let's talk about the problem first. You have a data that looks like this in Excel, and uh, it's basically an accounting data where you have invoice numbers, PO numbers, and the amount. Now, this data doesn't look right. There's nothing wrong with this column, invoice number, nothing wrong with this, nothing wrong with this. But if you look at this PO number, you see that in one cell, we have three PO numbers, right? Which is actually correct because those PO numbers belong to invoice number 01. And these three POs have this amount assigned to them. So you can see that the, the PO numbers are separated by these pipes, and these amounts are also separated by pipes. Now it is very, very impossible for you to do any kind of analysis with this sort of data, except you transform this data and prepare it to make it useful for your analysis. And if you are going to transform it, you probably be doing something that looks like this. So I copy this, paste here. Okay, so you're gonna have to take it one after the other. Say invoice number one has three PO numbers and three amounts underneath it. So you have to repeat invoice number one three times zero one, uh, zero one, and they are all in Naira. Okay, so NGN. Then the invoice amount is still the same thing, which is 268899. Now the PO number. So this is where the problem lies. So the PO number, you have to separate each of the PO numbers into different cells of their own. Same thing you are going to have to do with the amount. So this is going to be PO1, PO2, PO3. Then the amounts, put them separately again, 9048.39, and 38849, okay? So if you have your data laid out in this format, then you can do any analysis on it. In which case, you may probably not need this invoice amount anymore because now i will have an idea that invoice number one which has three po's sum up to that same amount two six eight eight nine nine right so you are going to have to do this for each of the invoice numbers and how tedious can that be really so let's see how we can clean this data or prepare it using power query okay so now i need to uh, connect to the Excel workbook with Power Query. To do that, I'm going to have to come to this data tab. Data tab. So I'll come to get data. My file is an Excel workbook. So I connect to workbook and it is called Dirty Invoices. So I just pick Dirty Invoices and click on Import. Okay. So I'm going to select this very first one, Dirty Invoices. So this is the preview. It has 10 invoices. So I'll just click on edit. This is the Power Query window and uh, I have data pulled in here to Power Query. And if you look to the right of the screen, you will see that I have three steps in the apply steps area. Everything, every step, every action you take in Power Query is being automatically recorded as steps. Right now, I have three steps here. The first one is the source, which is me connecting to that Excel workbook file. The second one is navigation, which is me navigating to the first table in the Excel workbook. And the final one is the change type step. So this step tries to understand what is the data type for each column in this window. So if you look at the invoice number, for example, if I go to transform tab, you see that data type is showing as whole number currency is data type for currency is showing as text so that is basically 
Power Query trying to understand what data type you have in each column. So the first thing I want to do, basically, uh, my objective is to be able to split these PO numbers into different rows. So rather than having PO1, PO2, PO3 on the same row one, I want to have PO1 on row one, PO2 on row two, PO3 on row three, and so on and so forth. Then I also want to be able to split these PO amounts exactly the same way, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is to try and replicate this view. So I want to keep this view constant because I'm going to work on it twice. I'll work on it first for the PO number, then I'll work on it for the PO amount. So to do that, I'll basically come to this last step, change type, right click on change type step. Then I will say insert step after. So this step after, I'm going to right click and I will rename it PO number. So rename this step PO number. Okay. So since I'm using this for PO number, I will basically get rid of this inverse amount and this PO amount. So I'll select this inverse amount. If I hold my control key, I can select PO amount as well. So I have these two selected at the same time. I'll just right click here and I'll select remove column. So I want to remove these two columns. Then I'll come to PO number, right click, and I'll select this option to split column. So I'm going to select split column by delimiter. And my delimiter is not a space, it is a pipe. So I don't have any option for pipe. I'll just come to custom and I'll type in the pipe here. Then I'll go to advanced options and I want it to split into rows rather than columns. So I'll select rows and I'll click OK. So now I have PO1 on row 1, PO2 on row 2, PO3 on row 3, and so on and so forth. Then the next thing I want to do, I need to add a column. So I'll add the column, I'll add an index column that starts from zero. So I'm basically going to be using this as a key to do some kind of VLOOKUP later on. So this column index, I want to change the name from index. So I'll just click into this formula bar and change the name from index. I'll call it key. So this is my key that I'm going to use to do a lookup later. Okay. So added index, this step, I'm going to come back to it. So I'll need to rename this or call it my final PO number. So my final PO number. So I'm done with setting up PO number. So I need to move on to setting up PO amount as well. So I'll basically come to this step for PO number where I replicated the change type step. I'll just copy this. I'll copy this formula in there. Copy. I'll come to my final step. Right click and insert a step after. So when I'm inserting a step after, instead of having final PO number, I'll just clean this and I'll paste that formula there. So I'm bringing back that step for change type. Click enter and I have this back, right? So this I'm going to right click and change it to PO amount. So since I'm using this for PO amount, just like I did the other time, I'll basically get rid of this invoice amount and PO number. So select these two, right click, remove columns. Now I have just PO amount. So I'll basically do the same thing all over again. Right click on PO amount, come to split column, I'll select by delimiter. Then I'll change this from space, I'll use custom and I'll type in the pipe. Then go to advanced options and change it to rows. So split it into rows, then I'll click OK. Now I have this as well. I have to do one last thing here, which is to add an index column that starts from zero. Okay, so I'll call this final PO amount. So rename final PO amounts. So if I come to this step for final PO number, you see what I have there? 
invoice number, currency, PO number, and key. Going back to this, my last step, I have invoice number, currency, PO amount. This index, I'm going to rename it. I'll call it key as well. So key. So if you notice, you will see that row one here, this row one and the key is zero, should match with what I have here. Final PO number, row one and the key is zero. So the key, the zero key is basically for PO number one. Key one is for PO number two. So what I expect is in front of this, my final PO amount, I want to see PO, PO1, PO2, PO3, like that all the way down, right? So to do that, I'm going to have to add a custom column. So I'll add a custom column, add a custom column. This column, I want to call it PO, PO number. And what I want you to do to return PO number is basically to go to this step, come to this step for final PO number. Final PO number. So come to this final PO number step. And I want to be able to use this column called key. Use this key column for each row to return to return the column PO number. So use that to return the column PO number. Then I'll click OK. And I have this. So this is basically what I want. I can just uh, drag this here. Let me make it come just after the currency. Then I can remove the key. I don't need it anymore. Remove key. I can basically change this data type to text data type. And if you look, you find some spaces in between these. I want it to look very clean. So I'll just come to transform and under formats, I'll basically select trim. So trim this, make everything look clean and we're all good.